All right, everybody, this is the 2019 Lions Criterium, sponsored by CMEX in uh, Lions, Colorado. We're racing around Sandstone Park, if you're familiar with the area. This is the senior men's Cat 4 race, along with uh, some juniors thrown in. Not a huge field for this, I don't know, maybe 30 guys or so. This is actually day three of an Omnium for most of these guys, not for me, because I don't go up hills. Spoiler alert, if uh, you didn't read the title, I end up dropping out of this race. DNF. You'll see why. <clears throat> so, let's go. So, Pretty typical, starting off pretty hard. You see the map there, this is a, this is almost a hot dog crit, if uh, you've ever heard that term. You know, mostly straight with a pretty easy turn up here, but down at the end is a pretty sharp hairpin, which really is what did me in for this race. Um, not Nothing exciting, just uh, my strategy to handle the hairpin. The uh, average speed for this race was only uh, about 24 miles an hour for, you know, the guy who won the race along with the rest of the uh, lead pack. So not particularly fast overall pace. It is hot today. Uh, temperature supposedly was only about 84 degrees, but in blazing Colorado sun, when it just hasn't been that hot this year, it felt hotter than that for sure. So this is the hairpin we're talking about. I mean, it's, you know, ends up being all but a full stop to go through that every lap with the group and it's takes a lot to get back up to speed. I, uh, in the 20 minutes that I'm racing this, I popped over a thousand Watts four times, but I mean, I went over 850 Watts, you know, probably a dozen times. So just really surgy, despite my efforts to, uh, try to be riding smoother on this race. My uh, heart rate's a little high, but I feel like it's a little higher than previous race efforts, just on account of the heat. I am also on uh, a bit heavier race bike today. I uh, sold my uh, tarmac and am riding my old LA 19 pound crit bike. Not that that's really any excuse on a flat course. So not sure why I bother to mention, but really very little wind. Um, if anything, I would say this section was actually tailwind and a little bit downhill. So it took really little effort to stay on through that. I mean, everyone just kind of, you know, all but coasts through that area. And then you go around the hairpin and everyone jams on it like every race. Pavement's a little rough through here, but no major potholes or anything that are, uh, a real concern, just not smooth. It actually, uh, I feel like it messed with me a little bit that it was a lot smaller pack, a lot smaller uh, field than we've been racing all season because 
you know, you don't see that many guys in front of you before you're on the very back. And I honestly just don't think I ever realized when I was all the way in the back. Here's one of our junior riders, and let me tell you, it's it's fun to uh, try to pull a draft off a 90-pound kid when you're a 185-pound guy. I think one of these uh, one of these young juniors actually pulled second overall. So, racing prowess, power to weight, fitness. You know, can't say anything bad about him there. So in this lap, I uh, I was attempting to move up toward the front because I'm really sick of coming to a complete stop on this hairpin. You know, I mean, in a group, yeah, that's that's your only option. You know, but if you can get through it on your own, you can go considerably faster and not have to get so hard on the power when you come out of it. And uh, I believe that's what I end up doing the next lap here, but... So yeah, 157 heart rate, that's getting up there for me. I mean, that's... Uh, you know, once I get up in the 160s, I'm in the uh, in the red for sure I haven't really been riding outside much I've been trying to uh, keep it a little warmer on my indoor training area but honestly the uh, the heat today was probably the biggest factors to uh, my perceived exertion and my uh, lack of ability to tough it out. I didn't see too much uh, sketchy stuff happen in this race. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is me moving up trying to get into this corner a little bit further up. Got a little bit closer there. Still jumping to 1150 watts coming out of that. And I mean, watching uh, Jeff Linder of NorCal cycling videos this past week, you know, analyze some other guys' Cat 4 footage. You know, they really harped on him for uh, jamming on the power too much on every, you know, lap around the course. So it was in my head that I really was going to try not to do that, you know, that doing, uh, you know, 500 watts for 30 seconds was a lot better than doing a thousand watts for you know a few seconds every lap but i just you know it just never seems like that's an option i mean if you uh you know if you don't get on it that hard you're dropping a wheel gaps open up and you're losing positions so this is me trying to take it easy coming out of the corner and still getting up close to a thousand watts or over every time. So put in a little more effort there than I thought I did. I jumped up to 500 watts for a second, but I mean, still here, I'm, you know, I'm recovering again. I'm up to 160, but not putting out much effort and my heart rate's coming down and I'm going first into the corner. So on this one, you know, as my heart rate's dropping, you know, I'm still doing 17, 18 miles an hour coming out of that corner instead of 12 or 11, you know, back up to 20 without having to do any kind of a spike. I think the guys actually thought that this was uh, an attack 
you know, they called me out as I came by that uh, there was something coming up on the right. You know, the teams were... So these guys come around like it's a counterattack, and I'm just, I'm just noodling trying to recover. You know, so I end up jumping on it again anyway. And not too hard, but I had to make sure I uh, didn't lose too many positions. It's still getting to me, though. 162 heart rate. It just, uh, so... Getting in the red already, you know, I just dropped from going off the front to, what, 20th wheel, and I had to go into the red to do it. So, not the greatest strategy. Big gap opens up, you know, trying not to let it freak me out, but got to make sure I at least stay in it. Still up over 160 heart rate. Like I said, that's it's deceptively high for me, I think. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's hot today, so I'm going to say that's a, that's a good five beats a minute over what uh, it normally would be. Yeah, 12 miles an hour is typical, typical speed. We end up going around that corner and, you know, get going from 12 back up to 24, 25 every lap. It really uh, takes its toll on you. So now I'm, uh, after the previous lap, I'm thinking, you know, for one, going off the front every lap isn't going to work. You know, they're not going to let that happen. And for two, you know, I put myself pretty in the red anyway. You know, even on this lap, I'm back up over 160 in this section. So now I'm starting to think that I'm going to make the same mistake that I did last week or last race and uh, start trying to tail gun this a little bit. If I, uh, if I let gaps open on this section, you know, it's tailwind, it's not a big deal. I can get, you know, I can let a, uh, probably a hundred yard gap open up or damn near it in this section and be right back on the back of the pack by the time the last guy gets through the hairpin. So the fact that this guy dropped off isn't really worrying me at all. I'm still drafting him, recovering. He probably knows, you know, is thinking the same thing I am, that we're going to be able to take the corner that much faster and just be right back on. No big deal. Still punch it up to about, you know, nine, high 900 watts for a second there getting it back up to speed, but. Heart rate's uh, not getting too bad on this one. And on this particular lap, yeah, I mean, it's, this, this surprised me. The pack slowed down quite a bit, this one. And I think I was, uh, I was hoping that this was going to be the trend that I could count on. It turned out to not be consistent. And, uh, and that's where I ran into trouble, but... Still, I mean... Really not feeling like I'm working that hard. I'm just trying to be efficient and, you know, save as many matches as I can, just trying to ride smart, and, uh, <laughs> is that Schlosser giving me a little <clears throat> acknowledgement there, but, 
so yeah, I mean, uh, it's just, it's a little frustrating making mistakes where, you know, had I just continued to race as I have in previous races and quit worrying about trying to be more efficient and trying to save matches, you know, who knows how the day would have went. You know, maybe I would have finished with the group or maybe I would have blown up anyway, but at least I would have blown up. I didn't blow up in this race. And this is a, feels like it's starting to become a theme where <laughs> I don't do as well as I had hoped and it's not because I went too hard. Taking a note from uh, Chris Tolley, who also uh, is a guy in Texas, P12 racer that makes videos. Following his protocol, I'm on my uh, third IPA as I'm recording commentary for this, you know, make it a little more interesting for me at least. So yeah, this is, uh, this is me not blowing up, not being worried at all about a gap opening in front of me. This is actually exactly where I plan to be, trying to keep my heart rate low. I mean, low-ish for how hot it is. Still close to 160, but yeah, I mean, look at my wattage, you know, I'm doing nothing. You know, I'm uh, just back here on my own, putting out zero watts, not losing any ground on the pack. Heart rate's dropping down, you know, 153, 152, and boom, there's the back of the pack. You know, I come around at least at 15 miles an hour. Don't have to dig too hard, you know, 600 watts instead of 1,000. Although I don't grab right onto the back of the pack because I'm still trying to make sure I don't keep going too high in the wattage every time. So in my head, this is still controlled effort. I'm not worried about it. This is the uphill section. There's really no wind to worry about. So, I mean, getting a little separation, just it didn't feel like that big of a problem on this particular race. But it might have been a little little more of an issue than I was giving it credit for at the time. Still not concerned. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's me doing invisible arrow bars. You know, I'm just trying to put out just enough wattage to not lose any more ground on the group while we go through this, you know, 24 mile an hour at zero watts by myself. But my judgment is starting to, uh, starting to be a little off. I'm going to blame the heat. In my head, this still looked like a uh, small enough gap that I wasn't worried about it, but they are all completely through the hairpin before I enter at this time. I mean, sure, I'm coming through at 17 or 16 miles an hour instead of 12, but I'm, you know, I'm dropping at this point. And I think this is about the time where I'm realizing that... Uh, I just dropped myself in this race. That is too big of a gap to cover. I'm trying to be efficient, but if I put in the effort to get back up on the group at any point on this course, it's gonna be too much of an effort in this heat and I'm not gonna recover. 
you know, I'll catch the group. I could catch the group at any point right now, but it'll be very short-lived, and the second they get back on the power, I'm just going to be popped and drop anyway. So this is, uh, yeah, this is where I realized that my race is over. I could be a uh, tough guy and just keep plodding along on my own, get lapped, and at least finish the race, but at the moment, it was hot, and I just decided to call it, so that's how you tailgun yourself completely out of the race. Apparently, I'm a slow learner, being as my last video, I tailgun my way into a mid-pack finish this time, even worse, so maybe someday I'll learn. But that's it for today. The... Uh, Overall, the winner ended up being Dan Cummins. Like I said, 24 mile an hour average, even at the win. And uh, that's the course, so out.